Hello, brother and crafted brother crafting and sewing family. Oh, can you tell it's Friday, Emily? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh my gosh. I'm Angela Wolf and I'm Emily Thompson, and so excited to be here with you guys today. We are so excited. So I really apologize if you just saw a link to join and then all of a sudden it disappeared. You know, technical issues and it's Friday. So I we are so excited to see you though. So if you've never been here before, say hi. We are live streaming. We are both Brother Brand Ambassadors and we are live streaming on Brother's Facebook and YouTube pages on the sewing and crafting side. So say hi, say where you're from. We can all see your comments and if you have questions, we'll bring them up. So Emily, how are you? What are you working on today? Oh, I am so excited to show you what I have been doing. And um, yeah, so I've been really busy working on, oh boy, of course. Uh, oh. Sorry, my sprinkler guys are working in the backyard and they just knocked on the window. So can you give Go me ahead. 30 seconds? <laughs> I'm cracking up because that's how today has been. The UPS and then a computer went out. Uh, yeah, so this is really funny. And then we almost decided, you know what, forget it. There's too many weird things happening today. And now we have the sprinkler, guys. <laughs> hey, everyone. How are you? So Emily, by the way, I'm actually at a different location right now. As you can tell, you can see my big fish on the wall. See him over there? Yeah, I bought that for win many years ago. I never knew that I'd be still staring at it 25 years later on the wall in our family room. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, our show, we had to move our show on Tuesday and we thought, you know, let's try to make this work on Friday, even though both of us were really busy. So thank you for hanging out with us. And what Emily's showing you today, though, is she's going to show how to do a neckline binding, which a lot of us use for our knits and for other things. So I'm looking really forward to seeing this. So while we're waiting for her, I can see you all rolling in. Excellent. So new technology today. If you can't hear or there's a weird buzz, just be sure to leave a note in the comments and we'll fix that. So <laughs> definitely. So by the way, while we're waiting for Emily, did you enjoy the show this week with the Chenille? Did you, if you missed that show yesterday, oh my gosh, that show in fact, all I can still think of is having a basket full of chenille jackets to give to your guests that come over. How awesome. All I have is like little fuzzy socks. So if you missed that show, it was yesterday and you go back and watch it. Yes. Hello. Good afternoon. And if you're laughing, I'm wearing a jacket and we have a fire in the fireplace because Northern Michigan, you would never know it's summer. Definitely. <laughs> Oh, I know. Wasn't it, Wanda? It was awesome. Or no, oh, it was first watching. Oh, hey, Emily. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, it's just, <laughs> I'm actually, we're supposed to have someone trimming our tree, which is right outside this window here, and they canceled, <laughs> so we don't have a chainsaw going and the sprinkler work in the backyard. So That, that would be just the perfect show. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an absolute combination. So, I've actually spent the morning um cutting out all i've been um i'm mass producing uh this dress pattern to sew for all the nieces in my family for this summer Aww. and um so i'm going to use two of those to kind of give you today's example and um but i was going to show you some of the fun fabrics that i've been um cutting up as well so i have this oh, striped one that. And, 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 you know, everyone is slightly differently sized, so I'm trying to keep them labeled and bagged, but we'll see <laughs> if I stay this organized. Um, this one is cute. So I have oh gosh, that's sort of so cute. pockets, and these are all um, double brushed poly fabric, so they're super soft. Oh, super and soft. Here's the third one, which I think is my favorite. <laughs> I love that. Um, and so, yeah, so I've cut out, um, one, two, three, I don't know, like seven dresses, the one outfit. So I have to make 13 outfits. The one I've already made is the smallest, the baby romper. Oh, look how cute that is. Um, so my sister has a two month or one, just over one month, and then it'll be another month, you know, before we get together. So hopefully this fits. <laughs> I saw a picture the other day and she was looking really chubby. So... <laughs> I don't know. And then um, the other fabric I have 
that I'm making boys shorts out of is this um, striped, this is a little pocket. Oh. So three boys shorts and a million dresses. Emily, so, that's such a great idea. I cannot yeah. wait to see this because I'm trying to come up with something for my little nieces and nephews. And I think that this would be great. I just would have to maybe call you and get some help. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, and then the oldest who's 14, 14 or 13, um, she wanted like just a t-shirt swing dress. So hers is a pretty simple, um, nothing cutesy, just a basic dress. So, and, and it's um, cut out of the firework fabric. So the oldest and the youngest will be um, matching. So oh, hopefully, nice. hopefully it works out. So I have two um, cut out that I'm going to use for today. And I thought I would just show the difference between a neck binding and a neck band. Um, and yeah, so that, that's what I thought I would show the tutorial. So we're not actually going to finish anything, but I thought those would be two, um, things that would be easy and fun to sew. So I need to get out the right pieces here. Yeah. Don't sew. actually all those colors, even if you sewed them together wrong, except for the neckline might not be the right size. Oh, <laughs> well, I was actually, when I bought the fabric, wondering if I would mix and match you know, like fabrics. And then today as I was cutting out, that was too overwhelming <laughs> to <laughs> think about how much fabric I had and make sure that I used the fabrics sort of evenly. So I just went and cut out dresses straight. And um, it works out well because my brother has three girls and my sister has, well, she actually has four girls now. Um, but so I try to make sure that they each have like you know, three different dresses and three different fabrics. So I can just kind of cut one out for each family of a, of a fabric and then I go on to the next one. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna switch my camera okay. over here just to the one on my machine. And I know that I'm super bright. I look kind of like, a, I don't know. Glowing. Glowing like a heavenly angel or something, right? Not really, but I have um, the window is back here and it's a gorgeous sunny day and um, the blinds, I couldn't get them closed, so. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. Um, okay, so hopefully my machines are up and running, but I'm going to start with the neck binding, which is probably not the way I usually sew necks, but it's the way this pattern um, that I'm making for these dresses actually uh, has you making the neckline. So I thought, well, we'll make that one first, and then we're going to try and convert using the same pattern, but convert it into a neck band, which I find, or a neck, yeah, neck band, which I find easier. So if I mix up those terms, keep me straight. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like I uh, might be confused here along the way. So I'm going to start. Oh, no. Of course. All right. We're going to sew. We're going to forget the serger. It's being temperamental. And I'm just going to sew it on here. I, I tried to get it set up earlier and it, I don't know if it's my thread or my needles or what. I just changed the needles. Um, I don't know, Angela, maybe do you always, do you use serger needles? Do you use knit needles? What do you use on your serger? I've been just having trouble lately. You know, um, it really depends. And this, which serger are you using? The 3734. Actually, I, I've been using that one too lately. And, um, I just use regular serger thread. I use just standard needles. If I'm using a knit though, I'll change to knit needles. But you know, it's interesting you said that because I went through about two weeks where I I had actually threaded one of my loopers incorrectly. I mean, how many times have I threaded it? Forever. Yes. But I had put the one over or under instead of over, I don't even remember which way, but it was opposite. And I would do four stitches and it would break. And I do this in my sleep as you do. Yes. Uh, anyways, check that because that's something that is like the simplest thing and, and you could stare at it and not even realize it, but don't check it live. <laughs> I know, I know. I feel like I need to rethread the whole thing. And I I used to always sew everything with um this is not even wanting to say threaded. I used to sew everything with um regular um serger needles. And then I don't know, maybe last year or something I had put 
knit needles on when I was sewing knit, but then I was having trouble with needles breaking. So I thought, well, maybe it's because I'm using knit needles instead of serger needles. So, you know, you I, I think I need to take like all the thread out, <laughs> all the needles out and start completely over. Because I do use a number 12 or a number 14 usually. And a lot of times, Emily, you're working on really thick fabrics. So you yes. might 14 better. And for those of you watching this, if you're not using a brother's serger, there are different brands out there. Uh, we're on a brother page, but you yes. need to check your machine to see if you can. Now they actually have serger needles that yes. are in stretch. So make sure that you're not going back to your machine going, oh, Angela said. <laughs> You'll be sending me a nasty message later. <laughs> yes. No, res no responsibility there. So, okay. So actually what I'm trying to do, and I think I need to, to hit pause on this and switch these needles out. So I had this set up to do top stitching with a um, double needle. And I was going to show that on the neckline, but it is not playing nicely on this knit fabric. So we're going to put a knit needle on here and go back to single so I can zigzag my seams since I'm not using the serger. <laughs> so this is probably a doomed project, but. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be good and you know it's uh well you know this brings up a good point though and everyone always loves the lie because it's the real life thing how often do you change your needles so we're gonna ask i'm gonna ask everyone watching how often yes. do you change your needles and i would say i change mine probably oh well at least a week, but i change mine about every other project because yeah one doll needle or if you ever break a needle here yes for you if you break a needle and you happen to damage your needle, um, your bobbin case. Yes. You can actually end up with skip stitches forever. I mean, you have to go buy a new bobbin case. They're right. like 50 bucks or something. But it, a lot of people don't even realize that can cause issues. I saw somebody online the other day. They were stitching, and the whole bottom was like a bird's a nest. nest. <laughs> I'd call it a mouse nest. But yeah. And uh, one of the reasons that could be is from the needle or the, bo the bobbin is wound in correctly or uh, you somehow damaged your bobbin case. So I know. So lots of lots of potential problems. OK, so because I'm not able to so construct the main seams with my serger, which is my preferred method, and I'll figure it out before I sew 10 more of these. <laughs> um, I want to just be able to sew the shoulder seams with a simple zigzag, which is, you know, kind of the second choice when, when I'm sewing with knit fabric. So if I can't use my serger, then I like to use a narrower, I usually set it about 2.5 on the width, a narrow zigzag, and I like to use that um, to construct my seams. They end up still nice and stretchy and, um, they, held, they hold up well for kids. So I'm going to use that to sew the shoulder seams here. And of course now it's working beautifully. Okay, so here's the um, shoulder seam. You can see it's nice and stretchy with the zigzag and it still is fine on the top side. So not, not quite as nice as if I used the serger, but um, decent. Okay, so now I have the neck binding. We're going to bind this one. And I'm first, first going to sew this into a circle. And I, love, I love how you cut that binding on with the, um, with the stripes. That was so well planned. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I've been trying to keep to do that on all of them and make the bindings a little bit different because there's so many fun patterns and designs in this fabric. So on this striped one, if I can pull out some of that, pattern then we can use that okay so now we have a circle and to do the binding um we are going to first find the halves of the binding here this binding piece and this is cut um one 0.75 inches, one and three quarters inches wide with the direction of stretch going the long way. And I also cut my neck bands the same width. So for me, 
I can decide kind of as I go if I want to put the bands or the binding because for this project, they're cut the same width. Now, the length will be slightly different, but the width is the same. All right, so now I have the front and the back marked on the dress top and the, the front and the back or the halves marked on the binding. So we're going to work on, can you see here? Yeah. Um, we're going to work on the wrong side of the dress top and we're going to place the right side of the binding against the wrong side. So this seems to me counterintuitive um, when we are doing, you know, when I'm normally doing the binding, this is not, or the bands, this is not how it would be placed, but um, we're gonna flip it over and it, it will be on the right side when we finish. So I've just clipped the back and then we're going to clip the front at the center. And if you have a bigger neckline, you might want to quarter it, but this is actually not very big. So I just marked it the two halves because I'm able to now stretch and mark um, the rest of it pretty easily. We don't have a ton of fabric here on this um, small little dress. Hey, um, I like to stretch and put several clips to make sure that it's evenly spaced. Sorry, Angela, were you saying something? No, just uh, someone just asked real quick, and I can't tell from where I'm sitting. Um, what machine are you on? What oh, machine? this is the um, 5200. The 5200. There you go. <laughs> yep. So I have been sewing on this one lately, and it's been good. It's so quiet. That was yeah. something commented. I did, she's even sewing? Yeah, and her camera's right there, which I know. I know anything about cameras that picks up every noise. Right. Can you, hear, and it, can it, you it, hear the person outside my door cutting trees down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it picks up my voice just fine. And I don't I'm not wearing a microphone. So, you know, it's picking up everything. And um I always think it's the is so good. All right. So now we have the um binding clipped around and with your regular 3 8 seam allowance. I'm going to sew that around the circle. And if you were using a serger, I would do that. Um, if you are not like I am, then you're using a stretch stitch to make sure that this neckband is still stretchy when the kids are putting it over their head. So thankfully I got one thing to work right here. <laughs> Yeah, you, Angela, you'll have to tell me if there's any questions because I'm not really um, monitoring that today. No, not so far. Everybody's just loving watching. Good. Well, hopefully we don't have any more disasters. So the neck, um, the binding is smaller than the shirt, um, as you saw when I was stretching it around. So as you're sewing it here, you also need to um, make sure that you continue to stretch the binding piece, but do your best not to stretch the shirt or in this case, the dress top so that we don't end up with a stretched out neckline. So I find that it is easier to end up with stretched out knits when I'm using the sewing machine as opposed to um, my serger. For some reason, that seems to bind the seam better and I don't have as many stretched out pieces. So hopefully and this will be fine because the binding is stretched quite a bit. Um, but yeah, we don't, we don't want a stretched out neckline. There's nothing quite like that. I think, I think they have commercials about that, Emily. Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> and the, and the laundry detergent magically fixes it. <laughs> Definitely. I need that laundry detergent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lower the camera here so you can see my work table here because this is where it gets um, a little bit tedious. And so now you're going to turn your top back to the right side. And we have the binding, we have the seam allowance, and then we have our main fabric. So um, what I'm going to do is you're going to press the seam allowance up towards the binding. You're going to fold the top of the binding over once till it meets the seam allowance. 
and then we fold it over again to fully enclose the seam. Now, the reason this gets tedious is because it just takes a while to do this all the way around. And I would say use lots of pins or clips. I love using clips for this because I don't have to like weave the pin through these multi multiple layers of fabric. So it's pretty thick here. Um, so I do like having the clips because they just clip nicely on the edge. So again, I'm folding the seam allowance up, folding the binding over, and then folding the binding over again to cover my stitches. So when we're finished, we don't want to see any of my zigzag stitches that I use to sew the neck band or your serger stitches. You would want all of that enclosed in this binding. And I use way more clips for this than I do probably for anything else because I'm trying to keep it all in place. I love using clips too, actually, while you're doing that. One tip for somebody who hasn't sewn with knits a lot, using um, clips, you won't puncture your fabric, which yeah. is a deal. Yeah. Oh, and I, and you know, with knits, because it's so stretchy, I find sometimes the pin like distorts the shape too, because of how I had to dig it through to get it on. Um, so that doesn't always work. Okay. So there is the binding. Um, oh, that's so cute. Around the neckline. And I think it just is a great compliment with that red stripe. Um, so the key is while I'm stitching now to make sure that I keep that binding pulled over my seam allowance so that we don't see that through. Okay, so I am prayerfully going to use the cover stitch and um, see if it will be nice to me. So I have the cover stitch set up for a two needle um, narrow stitch. Maybe I should just. Let's just bring this a little bit closer here. A two stitch narrow, um, two needle narrow stitch. You can do three, two narrow or two wide. And I'm using the two narrow because this isn't a very thick binding here. So I don't want to um, overwhelm it with stitches. So now we are going to try and slide this under here. And I have two needles, so I want the left needle to be right on the edge of this binding, and then the next one over, you know, to be just a little bit over. So we're going to try and stitch as close as possible to the edge of that binding. And then, of course, my hope is that I don't go off the binding. So let's see if I can drive straight. And I lost, I lost one of the needles. I'll give this about one more chance and then we'll switch back over to the trusty machine that <laughs> doesn't That's mess up. It's Friday, Emily. It's only because it's Friday. Oh, good thing I wasn't planning on sewing these dresses today because it would be a disaster. So <laughs> I just saw somebody ask you, uh, by the way, back to the sewing machine, when you were on there, uh, do you re recall what stitch length and stitch width you were using? Yeah, so I have... Um, the length I didn't change. It said at 1.4 and my width was 2.5. So I just make it a little um, narrower so it's not quite as wide of a stitch as what it's set at automatically. Awesome. You can also shorten the stitch length if you want a little bit. And sometimes I do um, if that if I'm um, worried about the seam. Okay, so I'm just trying to cut out a little bit of the mess here. And we're just going to go back over it again. All right, come on. I think I have two needles with me now. So on <laughs> this one, I have, um, a variegated blue that I've been using for a while. So I just decided to leave that on because it actually will work just fine with this fabric as well. Um, so until, until I run out, we'll 
sew the necklines with this. This dress doesn't have a lot of top stitching. And in fact, I don't even hem the bottom because it's a pretty full skirt. And I would have to use a very narrow hem, you know, with the knit fabric. So I, when I make this, when I made this pattern in the past for my daughter, I've never made nine of them before, but <laughs> when I have made it for her, I just left, left the bottom unhemmed and it looked just fine in knit fabric. So that's my plan for these dresses. We'll see. Um, okay, so I, you know, I pretty much stretch the binding pretty well when I put the clips in. So I'm not having to do a bunch of stretching, but I am trying to make sure again that I'm covering my stitches and I'm not really seeing them. So I'm going with it. There's a lot of stopping and starting, unfortunately, because of all the clips. But, um, you know, when you're sewing, I feel like when I'm sewing a hem or something, I can get a little momentum going, but not so much with this. So, okay, so I'm almost back around to where I started my stitches. So I'm just going to cut off those loose threads so that I can overlap my stitches a little bit here. You know, Emily, what you just said about having to start and stop, the whole thing, though, with necklines, no matter if you're using a sewing machine or a surgery, whichever way, you always have to because you have to make sure that it's laying nice and flat. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's, you know, one of the more common problems I see is either people have too loose. Oh, look at Here's the edge of end of that one thread. So we had just <laughs> perfect. <laughs> It's a good thing that didn't run out because that might have put me over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I can only take so much failure in one day before I have to walk away. Okay, so let me slide this back here a little bit. Um, you guys are so patient. <laughs> Okay, so here is the neck binding, and it lays so nicely, even with the top stitching. Um, it uh, will the camera focus that close? I'm not yeah, sure. Great! Oh my gosh. So anyway, and you can see how it's still totally still stretchy, and this is a pretty large neck opening. You know, it actually doesn't need to stretch a ton to go over um, my daughter's head. It's not like a tight neckline, but we do want to make sure that it still has some stretch and some gift. So I think it looks super cute. And this pattern um, is a free one, not one of mine, but um, I'll put the link later, maybe in the comments um, if you're interested in it. So it's a free dress pattern. It's really cute. And I found that it's really well um, designed and the sizes I've sewn, the neck binding has laid really nicely. So can we take this same pattern and turn it into a band, which I prefer sewing? That's the question. So I do have extra fabric if I totally mess up. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so cute, by the way. And um, if anyone's looking for that pattern, they can also go to your website because you always yes. have things yes. on. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to pull out the pieces for another one. Um, another different size. By the way, I mean, I, I have to just tell you while you're doing that, I'm totally sidetracked. I told you I'm at a different location today. I'm at yeah. And my husband just put out bird food, and we just had a woodpecker about this big come up and three hummingbirds. I just need to turn my camera. You don't even need to look at me. I'll just be like the side. <laughs> That's hilarious. So are you, are you guys staying at the cabin for the um, for the weekend? Yeah. Nice. We are, and it's um, going to be kind of chilly, but we're inside, and um, yeah. I'm loving the wildlife there's a bear up here and if that thing comes by i'm turning my camera around so you can see it <laughs> yes i would definitely want to okay so here is the next one that i'm sewing and i'm going to use my banding method that i do where i only sew one shoulder and then i just stretch the neckline on because that's my favorite so i'm going to start by sewing one shoulder again sew it with your serger or I'm using a zigzag here to hopefully construct a nice knit shoulder. 
Just, oh, I'm a little bit, you guys can't even see. Okay. It's the problem with moving my camera around is then when I move back. All right, so there's one shoulder sewn, nice. And then I open up the neckline and make sure I don't have the arm opening. I actually have the neck opening and I am taking my fabric and I cut this one a little bit longer because with the um, band, I think it won't, I don't want to stretch it quite as much because when you are double folding that fabric, you can kind of stretch it out and it lays, still lays nice and flat. But this is really only a single fold and not even really a fold over. So I'm afraid that it will look too puckered if I have to pull it too much. So uh, again, I cut the same um, width, 1.75 inches. I'm folding it over right sides out. And I'm going to begin sewing at one of the shoulder seams. And as I'm doing it, I'm going to stretch it. Now, um, you want to cut your neck band if you don't have a pattern piece. And even if you do have a pattern piece, I find that depending on your fabric, it's not a one size fits all situation because some fabrics are stretchier, even though they're all knit fabrics. So um, I like to, you know, usually cut about 85% of the length, but then I also have sewn about a million necklines over the past several years. So I can actually pretty much do it here by feel, where I know how much I need to stretch it as I'm going along. So that's what I'm going to do here today, just to show you why I like doing the bands better, because it is so easy. So definitely easier on the serger to sew all these layers together, but my zigzag is working. So I'm sewing two layers of the band and one layer of the dress top in my seam here. And continuing to make sure it's folded. You could also cut it the right length using your 85 to 90 percent rule, and then stretch and clip it just like we did with the um, binding. Now I'm having to pull a little bit from the back. I don't like having my hand back there. I know it's harder for you guys to see, but it is not flowing quite as smoothly through this machine as it normally does my serger. So, sorry. Isn't it funny how knits are so temperamental? <laughs> so temperamental. I know, I can't believe I still love them so much, but I think because they they fit, even when they, even if it's not a perfect fit, it's easy, I just, it's easier to get something to fit. It's so much more forgiving. Absolutely. And so I think that's why I put up with it, especially when I'm making kids clothes, because <laughs> I just want it to fit. <laughs> <laughs> Judy says, <laughs> I've had days like this and I end up just walking away and starting over the next day. You know what, Judy? We would too. <laughs> That's why I said I'm glad my plan this afternoon wasn't to be making these dresses. My <laughs> plan today was to get them cut out and I just have one, the tiny one for the one-year-old left to cut out. So I'm calling it quits after that. Thankfully, I haven't had any cutting issues. <laughs> Uh, okay, so there is my neck band, and on this side, you know, the seam allowance is a little bit bulkier when I don't, when I feel like when I don't have the serger because I have all these loose pieces. But I'm going to use the cover stitch again to top stitch that seam allowance over, which will help hopefully hold it all down and kind of, um, you know, make the neckline a little bit nicer because I haven't don't have finished edges there. So let's come over here, and then we'll sew that other um, side of the shoulder and then we can compare the two necklines and see what you guys think so when you're doing this emily it makes me think of so many people love that binding attachment to put binding on the neckline and when you leave that one shoulder open then you can do that yes with a stitch or something else with one swipe absolutely yes and i do have um i do have it for my cover stitch and i you know and it is so beautiful I mean, if I was going to do a lot of 
bindings, I I would do it that way. And maybe I should actually for these dresses. Oh, remember my needle was out. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> okay, I just saw that it like ended. Oh, yeah. Patty just said, oh gosh, you know what? If if there wasn't a 20 second delay, Patty, you would have saved her. <laughs> Patty said, don't forget your thread is out. <laughs> Ah, of course, of course. You guys are so helpful, but just too late. I know, Emily. I feel really bad that I'm sitting here watching the birds, and you're sitting there. If I can help you through this, I'm like having a disaster here today. <laughs> oh god! Oh boy. Well, it, it's it's good for a laugh, hopefully for somebody. <laughs> Everybody's saying now, you give Emily the love, okay? <laughs> And if I have to, I'll turn my camera on and you can bird watch for a while. Okay. <laughs> I can make like one of those fireplace videos that, you know, yes. people just stare at. Yes. <laughs> just just have a, it stagnant. Everybody's saying, oh, hey, Carrie. She says, I've done that no matter what machine I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I even talked about it. That's the problem. I like don't remember what I just said. <laughs> What I should have done and what I need to do is stop immediately and thread that, re-thread it. You know, it's because I went back over the other machine and, um, oh, there's my doorbell again. Just one second. <laughs> That's awesome. I think I have, to, I have to be honest. We don't usually have shows on Fridays. This is going to be my favorite show ever. I'm just dying. And if I have to, I'll turn the camera on and you can watch the birds. And yes, it's whatever that. Yes. Woodpecker, you said the really tall. Yeah. You said you have to out. yeah. <laughs> hey boys, we need to help us support the mosquito in the garage. There you go. Everybody's saying yes. I know this is hilarious. <laughs> what else can go wrong? <laughs> Nothing. This I said this is my favorite show ever. <laughs> the replay of this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Even better, not live. Okay. Can we finish this without? So when I restarted, I overlapped, um, you know, at least an inch of my stitches. The correct way would probably be to rip it out and start over. But that's not happening today. So... I just overlapped, it's on the back of the neckline, so won't be right in the front. And now I'm going to continue around here. I have two needles sewing, so the thread is holding up. And surprisingly, of all my machines, the cover stitch is playing nice today, so. That doesn't always happen. And then when I am top stitching with the cover stitch, I am making sure that I'm pulling the fabric just slightly to flatten it out so that um, I don't sew any puckers, right? You don't wanna do that. So, okay. So here, oh, too close. <laughs> okay, so here is the um, top stitch neckline. You see oh, that? So yeah, that looks great, Emily. Looks great. And then on the back, because of that looper on the cover stitch, it actually sort of enclosed that um, raw fabric a little bit better, and the nice stretchy neckline. So I'll have to come back here and fix where I joined the threads, but I'll do that later. Let's <laughs> so the other shoulder, so we can call it a day here. <laughs> um, <laughs> successful binding oh. all right so starting at um, you can either start at the shoulder or the neck band edge and it is a little bit more to sew over because now we've added those bands and I didn't do it in a circle you know I did it open so you just have to kind of be careful when you're going over that and what I will do is fold this seam allowance over and um, 
top stitch it here so that we end up with a, a nice flat shoulder seam. So when I'm serging this, I feel like it's nice and enclosed and a little bit easier, but I will totally be able to do that even though I didn't um, serge the soldier's shoulder seam, but we just wanna make sure it's all enclosed. But on the outside, it looks just fine. That looks no, so professional, Emily. Fine. Oh, I feel anything but professional at the moment, so. <laughs> okay, okay. That so really here, here is that second finished neckline. And I think this, it maybe raises the neckline up just a little bit. This is maybe a little bit more of a scoop. Um, but honestly, I think both will work great. And I might do some of each here with the others I have to sew. I'm not sure, but okay. There's your little comparison. So binding and bands. The, the one with the, <laughs> the one with the red stripes, that one, does, can you see any stitching at all on that one hardly? On the outside? Um, you mean, well, you can see my top stitching. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh, that looks wonderful. So, and I did blue, I suppose red or white would maybe even hide a little bit, but might oh, as well go I with like the color blue. scheme. <laughs> yeah, what the heck. So that one is actually stitched on the binding. This one is yeah. stitched on the binding. Yep, and then this one, when I top stitch, I'm really top stitching the seam allowance over to the main side, right? So you sew it on and I flip the seam allowance down towards the main body of the shirt. And then I've top stitched on that. So you can see actually, here's the the um, band and then you're top stitching on the shirt. Yeah, right below. great. And both of them look so professional. I've seen both of them in many areas, but the one that you have there, which is your favorite technique, that's, yeah. that's one of my favorites as well. Um, you know, when the serger's working, this doesn't take me any time at all to do this. So that's, you know, I think I like it because of the speed of it. Whereas this one is just more multi-step mm -hmm. and I, I don't always have the patience for that, but I do <laughs> love the way it looks. I really do. So. It's so cute. So I have a lot of questions about fabric. So uh, okay. do you have a blog post or anything like that that they can I, I don't, um, but it, I can either give you the shop name. I it's. I'm not affiliated with it. I didn't get anything free. I just bought it as a customer. Um, or you guys can message me. So I don't know, Angela, if I'm allowed to say the name of the shop. Uh, because we're on Brothers page, uh, no. But okay. uh, you can message Emily and, and maybe maybe take a photo and put it on your Facebook or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually took a pot of, of um, when I got the fabric in the mail, I took a big picture of it. So maybe I'll post that picture on my Facebook page. Uh, with with the link, and then you guys can check it out there. Then if you oh. want to stop shop, Michelle Michelle wants to know um, on that second one. Yeah, can you just show? Can you show the inside shoulder for that? Because that's where you had joined it on the shoulder yeah. when you had sewn together. She just wanted to just take a quick peek at it. Yeah. And remember, she's not using the serger, so it might look a little different than right. I mean, this my the serger would be my first choice, but I I've been I was telling Angela I've been having trouble for for days with it, actually. I was hoping it would play nice today. So um, there is the right side. And what, you know, you wanna try to join this as evenly as possible. And then here is the back side. And what I will do is I will fold this over and top stitch this so that it's not flopping around. That looks great. I'm and I usually see. only top stitch on the band. I don't top stitch all the way across. Because this side is held down when we do the shoulder, you know, when we sew in the arm yeah. um, sleeve. So, yeah. No, that looks great. And, you know, if if uh, those of you that are watching this that maybe aren't familiar with sewing knits or you're like, I don't know, I've never seen that before. If you look inside of much of your ready to wear, yeah. you can see that. Even the For tank sure. I'm wearing. Uh, yeah. which which this is how the show started. We should have known Emily right before I went live. I'm wearing a green shirt and I had the green screen on. And so my whole body disappeared. <laughs> All you could see was like a, my sewing room in my, yeah. <laughs> I might've jinxed you, Emily. I don't know. But um, if you look at a lot of your ready to wear, even tank top, yeah. things like that, they always have a shoulder open because then they can do, sometimes they have two shoulders open. Yeah. They'll do the armholes and they'll do the neckline. Yeah. Just use a binding attachment. Yeah. And it's it definitely is 
a fast way to sew it. So I know I figure if the stores can sell clothes like that, I can make clothes like that because I do prefer it. And if I was sewing um, armbands, I would do the same. I would sew the band on while it's open before I do the side seams. This, these have little sleeves, but um, I would definitely do it that way when I do sew armbands or bindings on. Yeah. And I see some of you asking about the websites. I put them below. Now, Brothers Blog just moved. And so it might be on Brother Sews, just plain Brother Sews instead of blog. Not Brother Sews. So if you go there, uh, it might be one or the other now. Yeah, um, not, I don't know the new address. I don't. I, I should have typed it in, but they just switched it. So you can find a ton of, and there's Emily's down there too. Someone just yeah. asked about that. So um, Marianne wants to know which one's your favorite? Oh, mine. Sorry. I would say Emily's, <laughs> Emily's his favorite. <laughs> um, I, I do, I like this one just because it's easy and it always turns out for me. I feel like I've had um, sometimes on this one where, I mean, this ended up looking super even, but mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes if I, the way I folded it or the way the machine kind of feeds the fabric, it's not always as even. So this turned out great today, which is good. Um, but the the bands are still my favorite just because of simplicity. Yeah, so cute. And it still looks fine. You know, it, it's not like I'm compromising the look for my easing. <laughs> Everybody says that they're loving your studio. Oh, thanks. It is. I, I It's so nice and bright in here. <laughs> Let's see. I think, yep, it'll be on her website. Oh, and they were asking about fabric. She'll put that on there, too. So just Yeah, the fabric will be on my... Um, on my Facebook page. So don't go to my blog for the fabric, but I will post both the pattern information and the fabric information in about three minutes. You know, when, after we're finished here, I'll put up a picture um, on Life So Savory on Facebook. So you're on Facebook now, probably, or YouTube. Um, just hop over to Facebook at Life So Savory and I'll have the information for you. And you can see that up there. I put the Instagram for all yeah. of us on there. And so Life So Savory is the same for Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> I got it, Judy. There it is right below the website. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Whew. I feel like I need to come down off of that um, adventure there. <laughs> we're both in the same page when i show up and like half my body is disappeared and you show up and you're <laughs> and you run out of thread that is a friday show that you can never miss <laughs> why we don't go live on friday usually i think here uh, you'll laugh so here i think well i don't know if it'll do it see oh, oh yeah it's like your middle's see? gone <laughs> Between that and the birds banging outside my window, this is, I oh, thanks, Anne. We love you, too. So all of you that joined us today, usually this was going to be on Tuesday. This was way more fun, Emily. Tuesday would have been way too polished. <laughs> I think the problem was the rescheduling in the first place, and then we had, like, four different times today we were going to do this, and we kept changing it. So, whew, oh, I those days. So, Kathy Ann, her, her Facebook page is Life So Savory, which you see above here. Yeah. You should also follow her on Instagram. Follow us all on Instagram yep. uh, because we're always sharing fun photos. So I, I know there's a, a 10, 20 second delay. I'll wait just a couple more seconds to uh, see if there's any more questions for you, Emily. But uh, that fabric is so cute. What are you doing this weekend? Anything exciting besides sewing? Uh, <laughs> I'm headed camping tomorrow. So um, there's a small chance of rain. But hopefully it stays dry because we are tent camping. So the kids just finished school yesterday. So today is their first day home, uh, full day. And they're probably already bored, but they're <laughs> surviving. And um, yeah, we're headed out camping. So hopefully, yeah, we'll be gone for a couple days. And hopefully the weather holds. I'm, I don't care if it's not hot, but it'd be nice if it's dry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you're not going to Michigan, I hope, because it's no, raining no. all day until right now, right when the show started, the sun came out, and I was like, oh, great. Blinded. <laughs> uh, yes. Who wants to know, what was the content of the fabric? Did you say it was a polyester? Um, this is a, a brushed, a double brushed poly. Yep, so it's just like a super soft. And then actually, I did also buy some. This is These two are French terry. So I had 
three fabrics of the double brush poly and two of the French cherry that I'm making all together for my coordinating outfits. That's awesome. Oh, Carrie said she did a live she, <laughs> last minute. She knocked down the camera over and yeah. broke the needle. <laughs> yeah. I've done that. My camera has been like, you know, so slow motion falling over. So <laughs> nice. Oh, Peg's using her scan and cut and doing an iron on transfer. That'll be fun. Very fun. Awesome. Well, Emily, I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, oh, you too. So great to see you. I'm so glad. I was so worried when we couldn't. There was all the issues. But you know what? Hey, this was the most fun show ever. <laughs> Good times. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you all for joining. And I hope um, even in the midst of everything, you're able to pick up some tips for your neckline going. I thought the tips were fantastic. I loved them. And you showed them so well, regardless. <laughs> So you have a good weekend. All of you have a wonderful Memorial weekend. I hope you yes. stay safe and dry if you're if you're camping. Yes. <laughs> and remember the reason for your holiday as well. Yes. And so next week, by the way, Tuesday, we will be live at 2 p.m. I, I believe it's May. Yeah, I don't believe. I just know it's May <laughs> coming on at 2. And Emily, I can't wait to see you next month. But for all Thank of you, you to follow Emily, she has a live show every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's right. And you always have great tutorials. Thanks. All right. Well, I'm glowing. I was waiting for that bird to come back to show you. And um, it, I could sit here for a while, but he's not coming back. But it's the biggest woodpecker you've ever seen. As long as he's out there and not against the house, we're good. <laughs> we'll say hi to your family. And you too. talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. I think. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great weekend.